Hello, BookTube. It's time for day 15 of May is for Magazine event. And we're reading from Chambers Journal of Popular Literature, Science, and Art again. And today, it's Saturday, March 6, 1886. It's an unnamed article again uh, called Cocaine. A new discovery in medicine which has established its claim to general utility is as much a matter of congratulation on the part of the general public as it is uh, on the part of the members of the profession whose duty it is to use it. The stir in the world which Simpson's grand discovery of chloroform excited is still well remembered, and upon reflection persons even now could not fail to be impressed with the incap incalculable amount of relief from suffering of which the drug is the source. If there if they were to pay a visit to one of the large hospitals and judge for themselves. It is true that chloroform has some drawbacks. It is true that chloroform has some uh, drawbacks. Uh, it is even true that indirectly, if not directly fatal results, have followed its use. But what good thing is free from all blemish, and how, it is best of all possible worlds, can we expect everything to be as we should wish? The discovery of ether, it should be remembered, afforded surgeons the opportunity in after years of making a choice between the two drugs. Fortunately, in this connection, the effects of each are different in certain particulars, so that in given number of cases, the use of ether is advisable, and chloroform is to be avoided. The explanation of this can readily be understood. The effect of chloroform uh, to its is to depress the action of the heart. In cases of an overdose of this drug, the heart is paralyzed, and when death occurs during the administration, there need not necessarily have been more than the very small dose given, but owing to some undiscovered weakness of the heart, which the drug unfortunately becomes the means of rendering manifest, sudden stoppage of the organs takes place, with, of course, death as a consequence. On the other hand, ether is exactly the opposite effect. The heart's action is stimulated during the administration, and contra uh, contractions of the organ are rendered more vigorous. Thus, whenever there is any suspected weakness of the heart in patients to whom an anesthetic is about to be administered, there is no hesitation on the part of the surgeon in using ether which under these circumstances is certainly the safest drug to employ. But apart from these considerations, all drugs which possess the property of producing what is called general anesthesia are associated with certain discomforts, certain inconveniences which materially direct from their usefulness. It is not necessary here to provide the nature of these, for the knowledge of them has almost become common property, so that their there are persons who would prefer endure the suffering in an operation than submit the administration of an anesthetic, the after effects of which perhaps previous experience has taught them to be carefully uh, careful to avoid. Surely then, under these circumstances, it must be a matter of extreme comfort for the public to know that a drug has been discovered whose properties is such as to enable the surgeon in many cases dispense with either ether or chloroform during the performance of an operation. This is the new discovery which agreeably startled the world of medicine towards the end of the year 1884. The drug in question is called cocaine, from coca, though sometimes also written uh, eucane and yucca, um, and it is and it possesses the remarkable property of causing local anesthesia when applied to mucous membrane, of which more anon. The plant from which this alkaloid is derived is erythazone, erath cyclone, no, um, ococa, uh, which is largely cultivated in the warm valleys of the western slopes of the Andes between five and 6,000 feet above the level of the sea. They're almost uh, the only variation in climate is from wet to dry, where frost is unknown and there, and where it rains more or less every month in the year. A few details with reference to this remarkable plant may not here be out of place. It is described as a shrub from four to six feet high, branches straight and alternate, leaves uh, in form 
and size of tea leaves, flowers with small yellowish white corolla, and are ten stamens and three pistils. It raises the plant from the seed. In raising the plant from the seed, the sowing is commenced in December or January when the rain begins and continues until April. The seeds are spread on the surface of the soil in a small nursery or raising ground over which there is generally a thatched roof. In, at the end of about 14 days, they come up with young plants being continually watered and protected from the sun. At the end of 18 months, the plants yield another, their first harvest and continue to yield for upwards of 40 years. The first harvest of the leaves are picked very carefully one by one to avoid uh, disturbing the roots of the young, <laughs> Excuse me. The young tender plant. Um, gathering uh, takes place three times and even four times in the year. The most abundant harvest takes place in March immediately after the rains. With plenty of watering, 40 days suffice to cover the plants with leaves afresh. It is necessary to weed the ground very carefully, especially when the plants are young. The harvest is gathered by women and children. The greatest care is required in the drying of the leaves, for too much sun causes them to dry up and lose their flavor, while if packed up moist, they become fetid. They are generally exposed to the sun in thin layers. Such is, in brief, the account of the plant which alkaloid cocaine has attained so marked uh, popularity within a short sp uh, space of a few months. Although the plant has only recently become known to us, its virtues have long been recognized by the natives of that part of the world in which it grows. It is, it is stated that in six, uh, 1583 the Indians consumed 100,000 cestos of coca worth $2.5 each in Guzco, and four dollars in Potsy. In 1591, an excise of five percent was imposed on coca, and in 1746 and 1750, this duty yielded eight hundred and fifteen hundred dollars, respectively, from uh, Caravea alone. Between 1785 and 1795, the coca traffic was calculated at one million two hundred and seven thousand four hundred and thirty six dollars in the Peruvian vice royalty and included that of Buenos Aires, $2,641,478. The coca trade is a government monopoly in Bolivia, uh, the state reserving the right of purchasing from the growers and reselling to the consumer. This right is generally formed out of the highest bidder. The approximate annual produce of coca in Peru is about 15 million pounds. The average yield being about 800 pounds per acre, more than 10 million pounds are produced annually in Bolivia, so that the annual yield of coca uh, throughout South America, including Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, and Pasto, may be estimated at 30 million pounds. It is scarcely uh, pleasant news for us to learn that the five, uh, that the natives of the cultivated that who cultivate the coca plant themselves absorb so, absorb so much of the products of their own cultivation. Uh, we have here, doubtless, the explanation of the costliness of cocaine and the scarcity of the drug in England. This can hardly be otherwise. Uh, it is to be feared for some time to come when we remember that the resilient reliance upon the extraordinary virtues of the coca leaf amongst the Peruvian Indians, Indians is so strong that it is uh, in the Huanco province. They believe that if a dying man could taste a leaf placed upon his tongue, it is a sure sign his, uh, of his future happiness. When Weston, the pedestrian, was performing his feats of endurance in England, it was noticed that from time to time he placed something in his mouth, which he afterwards chewed. For long he refused to divulge what the nature of this uh, substance was, but at last he acknowledged that he always provided himself with some coca leaves, and he added that the chewing of the of these gave him strength and enabled him more readily or easily accomplish his allotted task. 
in the states above referred to, the natives are accustomed to use the leaves largely for the purpose of allaying hunger. Now, the sense of hunger takes origin in the nerves of the stomach, and it is evident that if these nerves are rendered incapable of exercising their f functions, the uh, sensations to which they give rise must decline and remain temporarily in abeyance. This is precisely what takes place when coca leaves are eaten. Their effect is uh, to paralyze for the time being the sensitive ends of the nerves of the stomach and to establish particularly conditions of local anesthesia within the interior of that organ. The sensation of hunger, of course, under such circumstances become impossible, and the uh, native, after eating a few leaves, get, goes on his way rejoicing with the, time, with the same sensation as if he had partaken in a hearty repast. Although cocaine has been known for a good many years and has from time to time formed the subject of inquiry amongst distinguished British and continental uh, savants, including the veteran Sir R. Christensen, uh, it is reserved for Dr. Carl Kohler of Vienna to demonstrate the practical use uh, to which the marvelous property could be put. It occurred to the gentleman that the drug might be of use in the department of diseases of the eye with the object in view he experimented upon the eyes of animals applying the drug in solution of a certain strength and carefully noting the results he found that in the course of a few moments after the drug had been installed instilled several times into the conjunctival sac of the animal the organ becomes insensible the, uh, that become insensible that he was able to touch the cornea the front part of the eye which is endowed with extreme sensibility with a pin without at least flinching on the part of the animal experimenting further he ascertained that the insensibility uh, was not confined to the superficial parts of the eye but that it extended throughout the corneal substance even to the structures within the ocular globe and thus the fact so far as the utility of the drug for operative purposes came to be established. Then he turned his attention to cases in which the eye was the seat of disease and the cornea acutely inflamed and painful, and he found that much relief from the symptoms was obtained by the use of the drug. Soon after this, he com commenced to employ cocaine in operations performed upon the eye of patients, the eyes of patients. Uh, the results were highly satisfactory, and since then, uh, cataracts have been operated on squinting eyes put straight, foreign bodies upon the cornea removed painlessly uh, with ease under the influence of the drug. In, ca in cataract, especially cocaine of the great value, uh, this operation can be performed by its means without the slightest sensation of pain, and yet the patient is fully conscious and is, of course, able to follow uh, during the performance the precise instructions of the surgeon. Now to the outside observer, cocaine is apt to produce impressions somewhat akin to the marvelous. Here is a description which a writer gives in a recent number of the St. James's Gazette. A camel hairbrush is dipped into a small bottle containing a fluid as transparent as water. With the brush so charged, the part, uh, let us say the portion of the tongue, is painted several times. After an interval of about a dozen minutes, another brush is taken, but in this uh, instance a glass one, and dipped into a bottle the fumes of color and label of which establish its contents as fuming nitric acid. The tongue is freely brushed with the acid, great care being uh, observed in so doing, and submits to the procedure without the slightest recoil, indicative of pain. Such is cocaine, and such is the effect upon every mucous membrane. We have referred to this utility in the practice of ophthalmic surgeons, but it is not only in the department of the healing art that cocaine has been found useful. It can be employed whenever an operation upon any mucous membrane has to be performed. The drug has been used in the extraction and stopping of teeth uh, and results 
nothing less than startling in their completeness have been obtained with cocaine in all branches of medicine and surgery, bringing relief to thousands of sufferers. And it is true to remark more than that unqualified gratification to the physician or surgeon in charge. Even the uh, immemorial uh, bugbear seasickness has fled before the influence of cocaine. One word more. In the present prosaic condition of the world, when the surfeit of new discovery seems to have bred in its connection uh, the familiarity which produces the conventional contempt, it is refreshing to draw attention to a discovery which has surpassed uh, the ordinary standard of greatness sufficiently to aim, enable it to figure as a wonder of the age. Cocaine flashed like a meteor before the eyes of the medical world, but unlike meteor, its impressions have proved to be enduring. Well, it is destined to, in the future, to occupy a high position in the estimation of those who, who duty requires to compact, combat the ravages of disease. So there ends um, cocaine. Um, wow, I was surprised that they were saying, like, yeah, they estimated 30 million pounds of uh, of cocaine was done in and in the 1700s, the amount was like one million to two million dollars uh, that it exchanged for the for cocaine. And I love this other one. Oh, you take you take a brush of some of the cocaine, you you paint someone's tongue, and then you take uh, nitric acid and put it on it. Sounds like a great parlor game, doesn't it? <sighs> um, and uh, yeah, and no wonder. Uh, yeah, the natives uh, are. Uh, using and putting up the prices, the buggers, they're just they're just addicted to it, I suppose. Whoa, well, addiction. Uh, nothing was mentioned here about addiction, uh, but yeah, it's. I thought it was a very interesting article, and I I was totally unaware that uh, sort of it was eighteen eighty four that uh, cocaine sort of first came to sort of medical uh, knowledge. Um, I thought it was sort of always known to be there. But uh, it's quite interesting. Anyway, I'll end it there, uh, BookTube, and I'll see you tomorrow.